Hey, welcome to Kate's Crafts. I'm Kate. Today I would like to share with you an idea that I've had in my head that I think I finally figured out. My goal is to show you, then challenge you to do it yourself using Lawn Fawn's new platform pop-up die. I think this idea is rather neat and could spark a lot of creativity. What you'll need is Lawn Fawn's platform pop-up dies, Lawn Fawn's flip-flop and its matching stamp set, any three-inch circle die or cutout, acetate, and a few other items listed in the description. Here I have the uh, third largest um, circle die from the Circle Combo Cuts by Mama Elephant. This is the closest thing I had that didn't have any stitching in it. Here I'm taking a ruler to show that it measures out three inches and I'm going to be poking a hole in about the center of it. Here I have the cutout for the reveal wheel just to kind of give you an idea of the size and I'm using it to cut a hole in the center of it. Uh, the reveal wheel is just a little bit bigger than this one and uh, I was able to cut it out. So when I cut this through the die machine, I um, used a scrap piece of cardstock to kind of make it to where it wouldn't scratch up the bottom of it because my cutting plates are well loved and uh, I didn't want to damage the acetate. So I've used the cutout and I've placed the acetate in the center of it and I'm using the bubbles from the Bubbles of Joy stamp set and I'm going to use the Stazon Sullivan ink to stamp those around the bubble or around the wheel I should say and I will do that on both sides not both sides but both sides of the circle here I'm just kind of masking off the other side to give you an idea of what I'm doing here but I didn't want to get ink all over this is the first time I've ever worked with uh, stays on ink. I had to watch a few videos before I did this just to kind of get an idea. So once I've got that done, I am going to fold along all the score lines that the pop-up die created for the platform pop-up card. And I've cut out the three T's that I'm going to need. Now for this, you all need a fourth T and I come to realize this mid-process and end up going back and cutting out a fourth T. But for this one, um, there's a video that you can watch on how to properly um, put these together. Uh, I'll try to remember to link that as well because I do a terrible job trying to explain exactly how this is done. <laughs> So what we have here is I'm lining up that little T with the sticky bit on the back side and I'm adhering that to the platform itself. And then I'm taking that bit and kind of stepping it up and tucking that tape bit underneath so that way you get like a little platform, so to speak. So I've done that with the other side as well and now I'm going to be working on the inside of the platform, the two pieces that you join together. Uh, trying to figure out how I was going to do this initially, I was just going to have one of the little T's in the prototype that I made. But here I decide that I'll probably need a second one. And those little um, notches that the die created uh, aren't really going to do me much justice. I worried that they would get caught as you tried to turn it. So I ended up cutting off those little notches from the die suppose I could have used uh, my Cricut to cut it out, but um, I wanted to work with what I had readily available and didn't feel like turning on the Cricut and trying to figure it all out. And here I am just kind of using that circle to kind of give me an idea of where I want the hole to go on the little T-shaped piece. Here I have a little container of brads that I got from Michael's on sale last year. Uh, thankfully I picked them up. So... Here I've got the second T that I needed uh, that I'd mentioned earlier and I'm just trimming that down to size and I'm going to line that up with the first T to kind of figure out where I need to poke that hole at um, so that way I have one of each on either side of the little circle with the bubbles that I, I've already done. So I'll line that up there to make sure that it's short enough 
and I will add some double-sided tape to the one side of it. Now you only want tape on the one side because you want to create a space for the circle to kind of glide through and you don't want to tape that together otherwise the the circle won't move. So once I've got that lined up I'm going to remove the release tape and I'm going to adhere that down to the first part of the platform and then I'm going to repeat this process on the other side but to get it properly lined up I'm going to poke a brad through the hole that I made to kind of keep it in place so that way I have it properly lined up when I adhere it to the next platform that I have. So once I've got that down I'm going to use a piece of low tack tape to, to hold it together but um, this side also needs to have some double sided tape just on the one side because Again, you don't want to stick this all together right away. So once I've got that down, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do exactly here. And this is where the low tack tape comes in to kind of hold those two together, keep them from shifting around. Because the brad really didn't do a whole, whole lot other than keep that hole centered. And this is where I figure maybe I need to butt those two up together and tape them. So my first attempt, I don't really quite get it. Um, I get it taped down, but I don't push it down too tightly and I'm still able to peel it up and uh, without rip it, ripping it and properly put it together. Um, you gotta watch your spacing with this thing too because if you have it too tight, you won't be able to put much in it. But since the... Um, there's a little bit of bulk with the paper and the acetate. It will sit slightly funny, but I don't think that it'll have too much effect on the overall process of it. So once I've got that down, I'm going to take up the release paper and I'm going to flip that over and line everything up and then push it together so that that one side sticks to the other side and I've got everything pretty much lined up. So that way there's not a whole lot of guessing when I take that apart and put more tape on the inside to hold it together. So once I've got that, I remove everything and open it back up and um, I'm ready to go. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut pieces of the double-sided tape and put them where I need to put them. Uh, there's a bit there that will attach the other side that I wanted to take care of and that way I don't have to fiddle with it later. Here I'm putting the brad back in to kind of give me an idea of spacing and with that I'm putting the circle back in and then I'm going to put this one back together. But first I'm going to put tape on the inside but making sure that uh, it's completely clear of the moving part, like the moving circle. Because again, you don't want it too tight because you want this to be able to spin when you move it. So once I've got that, I remove the release tape and make sure that I've got that brad in the next hole. And uh, I'm careful not to put any pressure where the tape is because I don't want it to, to stick right away. I want to make sure that everything was lined up there with the brad before I t close it. So I just push it down and kind of make sure it's all right. And then I get my fingers in there and I push it together. And now I'll be able to completely close that last little bit to create my platform. So once I've got their tape moved, or the release paper move, I'm able to fold that little bit over and properly line it up. Again, you don't want this too, too tight with the edge because you have got a little bit more bulk in the center of that. So once I've got that done, you can kind of see that the wheel moves on its own, but the brad doesn't move. So now I've got the bubbles that I want to color in, and you want to make sure that you don't color on the side that has the ink. I forgot what side the ink was on and kind of smeared it a little. 
And for the mice, I have used the flip-flop mice from Dandy Day, and it's matching uh, reverse stamp. Uh, my idea here is to have the same image on both sides of the wheel because you'll be able to see through it. And instead of seeing the back side of one, my idea here was to be able to see the same image from both sides. So I've got both mice there. I got one lined up with its little bubble wand and now I'm using it as a guide to line up the other one. So that way it'll be the same on both sides. And of course I lost it here. So I gotta re reline it up again. Uh, the glue was still a little too wet, so I've got those two together, and I'm going to set those off aside to dry. Here, what I'm going to do is I am going to add some double-sided tape to each of the top of the T's. I believe that's a eighth of an inch uh, double-sided tape. And I'm going to go um, on either side of the brad, which I don't think it really mattered at this point, because the brad really doesn't move in this mechanism. Just the circle does because the hole was big enough. If the hole's too small, it'll probably move the brad with it. So you don't want the, the hole too small when you do this. So once I've got that, I'm going to um, pull up the release paper from the double-sided tape with my pokey tool. And uh, I'm going to adhere the one part of the hill down. Uh, and I just use the, the little stitched hillside piece that came with the die for this one. So I'm just making sure to line up the ends with the ends of the T and once I like that then you could push it down and then I'll repeat the same process here. I'll uh, pull up the release tape paper and uh, if I can get it. <laughs> I find the smaller ones are kind of fiddly. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll line it up and I find that sometimes if you push the, the bottom bit up, you could line it up a little bit better. So I'm lining it up to both sides to make sure that you kind of get the same continuous look from whatever side you look from it. And uh, I'll continue on with the other little hillside bits that I've cut out here to kind of save some time because I don't want this video too, too long. Here I've put a little tiny strip of double-sided tape to the bottom of the mouse and I'm adhering the mouse to the hill itself. Uh, you don't want anything sticky on the mouse that will attach itself to the acetate. Again, you want the acetate to be able to move. Uh, so I'm going to do the same to the other mouse and I'm going to line that mouse up with the first one so that way he just looks like one character instead of seeing two. So that way, like I said earlier, you could get the same image from both sides. And then I'll add a little tiny piece to the top where uh, the wheel doesn't go through. And there you have it, my finished idea. I really do hope you decide to try it if you have all the um, ingredients that you need to create it. Uh, I really enjoyed trying to figure this one out and I hope you try it as well. Make sure to tag me in it, either on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. If you've enjoyed today's content or found it inspiring in any way, please give this video a like. I also welcome you to subscribe as I post videos weekly. Here's another video I think you might enjoy. Thanks for hanging out with me. Take care.